All right. All right, so we're just gonna finish up the last little bit of our lecture on primate classification, and then we're gonna delve into our next lecture on primate diet, locomotion, and sexual dimorphism. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the last thing we talked about, we talked about the gibbons and the siamangs, and we talked about their brachiation, and then we started talking about the great apes. Does that sound correct? Yep. Awesome, perfect. Okay. All right, so we already talked about the lesser apes and we watched their form of locomotion. The, the lesser apes, the gibbons and the siamangs, those are the ones that are using their arms to swing from branch to branch in a form of locomotion called brachiation. So they have really long arms, really long forearms and shorter for, and shorter hind limbs. They have, they have curved finger bones. They have really powerful shoulder muscles. And they are a primate species that has been shown or has been observed to exhibit monogamous strategies as far as reproduction. And the reason that's notable here is that's actually somewhat rare amongst the primate order. We see monogamy in the gibbons and the siamangs. We see it in some of the lower order prosimians, and then of course, some humans. All right, and then the great apes. So the great apes are going to include the orangutans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and gorillas. Um, the gorillas and the orangutans have that feature called the sagittal crest. That's the bony mohawk feature running down the center, um, which is running down the sagittal suture. The sagittal suture separates the two parietal bones. So the sagittal crest is called the sagittal crest because it's a crest of bone that runs down the center here. So this is significant because it's really more so related to their diet, um, their craniofacial shape and their very robust jaws, their sagittal crest, is related to the fact that they spend the vast majority of their time chewing. They sp Gorillas spend about 50% of their waking hours just chomping on vegetation because vegetation, when you think about it, it does take a lot of chewing force to chomp up. The, think about eating a salad. Think about eating a salad with lettuce and spinach and carrots and cucumbers and all that good stuff. It takes quite a bit of chomping force to chew up those raw veggies. And gorillas also have a very large body size. So they have to eat a large amount of vegetation in order to support that, you know, 400 plus body size. Um, chimpanzees and humans are what we consider omnivorous. So they're really one of the only primate species other than us that significantly includes meat in the diet. Um, significantly is maybe the wrong word. They... Um, chimpanzees survive mainly on vegetation, fruit, insects, tubers. They really only include meat in the diet when it's necessary, um, or it's also part of their um, their dominance hierarchies as well. When we get into the behavior section, we'll watch some video clips of chimpanzees hunting, and they have um, really organized cooperative hunting parties, and they also use meat sharing as a way of negotiating their dominance. Okay, locomotion. So they the the apes are probably the most varied, have the most the 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 widest variety of modes of locomotion, because in the great apes we see knuckle walking. So that's probably the their most predominant form of locomotion is knuckle walking. So it's a form of quadrupedalism where they're on all fours and they're up on their knuckles, just like it sounds. So they have really robust flanges and and uh, tarsals. So their their wrists and their hands are very strong. Uh, they also have limited brachiation just simply because they're bigger. And they're also going to occasionally use their arms to swing from branch to branch, just like a gibbon or a siamang. But because their body size is much larger, um, they don't use it quite as often or as, as effectively as a gibbon or a siamang does. And then, of course, they have limited bipedalism, what we call occasional bipedalism. When we get into the bipedalism section in a few weeks, we'll talk about the levels or degrees of bipedalism. The great apes engage in something called occasional bipedalism, which is just like it sounds. It just means that they occasionally stand bipedally, walk bipedally, but it's usually when they're carrying something, usually when they're carrying an infant or a tool or food. Uh, they don't tend to rely on, bi on bipedalism um, and on a regular basis. And then we'll learn that humans are characterized by a skeletal structure that allows for effective, obligate, full-time bipedalism. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the great apes because they're so cool. So the orangutans, these are this is the Asian great ape or the living Asian great ape. 
And the name orangutan means wise man of the forest. They are found exclusively in Borneo and Sumatra, and they have separate species. There's the Bornean orangutan and the Sumatran orangutan. They are predominantly arboreal, and they eat mainly fruit. So in our next lecture, we'll talk a little bit more about what defines a frugivore. Uh, but just know for now that orangutans eat predominantly fruit. They also, just like the gorillas, they have high levels of sexual dimorphism, with males being double the size of females. And unfortunately, like many of the other great apes and many of the primates, they are severely threatened due to poaching, habitat loss, palm oil production, coffee cultivation, and wood pulp cultivation. So, um, you know, I know, I know sometimes the, the task of animal conservation can seem really daunting, but something that we can all do is look at the look at the products we buy and see if it contains palm oil and try to find another product. Um, lots of things that you wouldn't even think about, like peanut butter, Doritos, uh, lots of beauty products contain palm oil. And if we just simply make make the choice to not purchase those products, we could help out some orangutans. All right, gorillas. Um, there are different species of gorillas. There's Western lowland gorillas, Eastern lowland gorillas, and mountain gorillas. They are found in the forests of equatorial Africa, what's in modern day Uganda and Rwanda, and the DRC. So they are also unfortunately very critically endangered. We only have about 700 mountain gorillas left. Um, they have extremely high levels of sexual dimorphism, the highest of the primate order. The males are 400 plus pounds. The females are 150 to 200. So males are double the size of females. Um, they live in harem groups, which we'll learn more about um, next week when we get into the behavior and reproduction section. Um, but for now, no, it's one dominant male that is basically in charge of and mates with all of the females in that group. And then there's bachelors that live on the outskirts that attempt to over, overthrow that harem mister. And gorillas are mainly vegetarian, which sometimes is surprising to students when they see these, you know, big projecting canines, they assume, oh, that species, that primate must eat meat. But actually it's the opposite. Gorillas are the most vegetarian of all the primate species. They do eat some fruit as well, but, um, you know, they, they are mainly, mainly veggies, mainly meat. vegetarians. All right, chimpanzees, anatomically similar to gorillas. They're a little bit smaller. They're not quite as large. They're less sexually dimorphic, but behaviorally, they are very different. Um, chimpanzees can be somewhat brutal and competitive. Um, they tend to be very male dominated. They tend to, um, they have poly, poly, uh, polygonous mating strategies, but it's multiple males mating with the females in the group. They have very complex, sophisticated dominance hierarchies that often shift. Um, they often engage in warfare with other groups or they've been observed to engage in warfare. They are omnivorous. So meaning that they just eat, they're opportunistic. They eat what's, what is, what's ever available. They eat vegetation, fruit, insects, tubers, sometimes meat, uh, basically whatever's there, which as we've learned thus far, being able to eat a variety of food sources is really adaptive because in the game of evolution, diversity will always win. Because if all of a sudden one food source is no longer available or because of seasonality, um, maybe one fruit type is no longer available during that season, all they have to do is just switch food resources then. If they already have, you know, 10 other things they can eat, then it's not a big deal if one thing is suddenly not available. Um, like I mentioned before, they do engage in hunting and meat sharing behaviors We'll learn more about that in our next section, uh, not today, but next week when we get into the behavior section, we'll watch some video clips of them hunting and meat sharing. They have group sizes that can range anywhere from 10 to 100 individuals, and they live in fish and fusion groups. So fish and fusion groups essentially means that uh, during some seasons, they live in, they're in smaller groups of 10, and then when they fuse back together, these groups of 10 fuse back together during more plentiful season. So they kind of go off in these little hunting parties um, when the when the food is less plentiful. All right, and then bonobos are one time once called pygmy chimpanzees or once thought to just be smaller versions of chimpanzees. Um, but further studies show that bonobos are not actually that much more gracile or smaller. Um, they sometimes are a little bit more slenderly built, but as far as their overall weight, they're not really significantly smaller than chimpanzees. Um, they are though behaviorally very different in, in interesting ways. 
they tend to be as so chimpanzees were very male dominated very aggressive very territorial very complex dominance hierarchies bonobos tend to be female dominated they tend to uh in in the field we call it they call them the hippies of the primate order because they like to make love not war um, they use sex to negotiate dominance they engage in sex for reasons other than reproduction their copulations are frequent and occur outside of the female's estrus cycle. So they occur outside of the time where that female could actually conceive a baby. So that's significant because we don't really see that in any other species except, of course, us humans. Bonobos and dolphins are really the only species that we see that kind of behavior in. So that's why it's somewhat significant that we see that these, these primate species are using sex for reasons and other, other than just pure uh, making babies. They use sexual encounters to diffuse tensions and negotiate dominance hierarchies within their group. And same-sex pairings are also common. So bonobos, um, when they were first discovered, it was interesting. And I, I was listening to a podcast on this not too long ago. Um, I guess they there was all these documentaries being made about chimpanzees and hardly any being made about bonobos. Because I guess when the documentarians went to, to film them, they just wouldn't stop having sex. And um, Americans, we can sometimes be very conservative. And I guess Americans, especially in that time in the 70s and 80s, were not really comfortable with those kind of documentaries being shown. So this is changing, of course. Uh, there are documentaries out there about bonobos. I'll try to find some for you guys that I would recommend if you're interested. Uh, but I just thought that was really interesting that, you know, that when bonobos were first discovered, um, they, there wasn't really a lot... The public didn't know much about them because of um, the, their behavior, that uh, the documentarians were fearful to publish documentaries with just primates having sex. Kind of cool, oh. right? Kind of interesting. Questions? Comments? Okay, so that's basically the end of our lecture on primate classification. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to pause the recording real quick and then restart it just for my own purposes. Boom. And so we're, we are at the end of our lecture on primate classification. If I can find the button, I'm going to stop the recording, then restart it.